Hey everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Hermione and I make videos about eco-conscious living, vlogs, and DIYs. This is a summary of the last week of my trip to Korea, week 10. And this week we went to Kukiwon, which is the World Taekwondo headquarters. And then we are going to the Gangnam Resource Recovery Facility, which is where you can see how they actually dispose of trash in Korea. They incinerate it and they actually use the steam generated by the whole incineration process as energy, which I think is pretty cool. So it's like recovering those resources. And then we are going to be flying home, so you will see the lounge and then of course, you know, the plane flight and there's a pretty good view from the plane so you can see all the cool stuff there. Without further ado, let's get into the video. This is the World Taekwondo Headquarters. This is the Cooking World Museum. Whoa, there's so many medals here and pins. Cookie one. This is the National Hangul Museum. Wow. Whoa. The designer writing system beyond millennia. In 1443, Sejong, the fourth king of Joseon, created Hanmin Jongum, old name of Hangul, letters that everyone could easily write. Whoa. So I suppose this is like the evolution of Hangul. The language of the country is different from that of China. Before Hangul was created in 1443, Korea borrowed Hanja, Chinese characters from China. Many countries in East Asia, which were geographically adjacent at the time, also used Chinese characters. However, it was inconvenient and difficult as the flooring clothes that did not fit. This is like VR without the glasses. It feels so real. King Sejong, the one who invented Hangul. Whoa, it's like a digitally projected book. So when you flip it, it changes the page. These are stamps. No. Whoa, these are like blocks that were carved. So you could use an inkstone and transfer it onto a page. From king to slave, people write a letter in Hangul. Hangul, created by King Sejong in 1443, became the official script of Korea only in 1894. The joy was short-lived because Korea lost its sovereignty to Japan in 1910. Hangul also lost its status as the official script. However, intellectuals at the time who knew well that the identity of a nation stems from its language and script did not stop the research, education, and literary activities despite Japanese oppression. And they were able to protect Korean language and Hangul. This is the oldest Hangul typewriter to date. Wow. This is pretty cool. I didn't know that typewriters existed to type out Hangul. Wait a minute, this mirror stand looks exactly like the one that was in the traditional house that we stayed at. Wow, there's a pavilion over here. There are a lot of flowers. There's a nice pond with some aquatic plants. I think these are lily pads and something else. I'm not exactly sure. This is showing the earth in danger. And this is just all the trash. And here it's talking about how the world has been warming 
These are the visual signs that the earth is getting warmer and needs help and stuff like that. This is about the increased number of floods, which is dangerous. This is about the polar ice caps melting and how that affects wildlife. And this is about how the polar ice caps melting causes raising in sea level, which we know is very bad for people, you know, the flooding and also little animals. And then we have this over here, which is the complete opposite of that one. It's, you know, total desert, there's a drought, there's this dead fish or something stuck in the mud. It's terrible. And here, this is talking about how if we have no bees, then we only have four years left to live as, you know, a species because the bees literally pollinate all of our food. And without food, we cannot survive. This chart over here is showing how the world has been steadily warming ever since the Industrial Revolution. And right here, we are in the 2000s along with that plane. This is about global efforts for green growth by people around the world. And it's explaining about how they're switching to electric buses and they're saving water. And of course, there's their amazing recycling and trash disposal policy. Um, one thing I have to say about the electric buses, however, there's a problem of where you're actually getting the energy to supply these buses, so that's just something to think about. Resource recovery facilities that transform waste into precious resources. And by that precious resource, we mean energy. So over here, it shows that you can create energy by recycling resources. So by burning trash, you're creating this steam and you use that steam to power houses and the area around the treatment plant. And so over here, it shows that this house is powered by energy that was generated from the steam over here. This is about the different types of green energy that we can use to power the future. This is energy that I explained before from waste. So, you know, from burning trash, you get the energy. This is about liquefaction and gasification of coal, photovoltaic. I think these two fall into the same solar panel type energy categories. This is about bioenergy, which is getting energy from plants, corn, and stuff like that. This is about fuel cell energy. This is about hydrogen energy, which is very interesting. This is wind power, which is, you know, from these turbines that spin. This is a smokestack where all the filtered smoke comes out. The dioxins and stuff like that are filtered out. And if you look closely, you can see the smoke there. Wow.
Thanks for watching! Like if you like this video. Subscribe if you want notifications about new videos. I usually post one every Saturday, so please be on the lookout for that. And remember to comment down below if you've been to the Cookie One or the Kangnam Resource Recovery Center. And also, overall, if you enjoyed my Korea vlog series. Have a nice day! Bye!